Friday night's gonna be all right. It's gonna be right. It's gonna be all right now, baby. Friday night's gonna be all right. It's gonna be right. It's gonna be all right now, baby. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It's Friday, my dudes. Here's a message of importance to millions of people who are continually pale and washed out, weak and run down. Doctors will tell you that these conditions are often caused by a deficiency of iron. The iron you need to keep you physically fit and mentally alert. Medical studies show that two out of three women and many, many men lack the daily iron your body requires in a form your body can easily use and put to work. Every dose gives you more than your daily minimum iron requirement. We are the way. We are the way. We are not alone. We are the strength. So if you're not getting the iron your body needs, we are if you feel weak, run down, and are easily upset, start taking iron today. T-G-I-F, ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. It is November the 8th, 2019. Holy cow, New Year's is just around the corner. Don't be a January fool. Make sure you have your New Year's Eve plans set up. Be safe, drive safe, get a sober sober, sober chauffeur if you must, and make sure you get your New Year's New resolutions Year's in Eve order plan. because it is just a couple weeks away. Well, it's Friday. I am recaffeinated, reinvigorated, and ready to go and ready for another exciting episode of Have No Sphere right here on the Iron Realm Media YouTube channel and being simulcast for the first time on our Have No Sphere Facebook page. So make sure you head on over there and give the page a like and tell your friends. They can always hang out and watch this evening's show over on Facebook if you're not uh, one to hang out on YouTube. Plus, there's a whole other chat over there. But let's just jump right in and say hello to the fellas. Let's just jump right in with, uh, let's see, who shall I start with? Let's start with one Mr. John Savage. We don't ever get to start with Savage very much, do we? I'm Savage! How you doing, John Savage? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Josh. Yeah, doing very well. Um, as always, looking forward to the show. We've got some great guests on tonight. And uh, yeah, well, I'll move it along. I'll pass the conch on. There's, uh, there's so many people here. We do have quite a room full. Let's just jump right over then to Mr. Adam Meekin. Adam, how was your week at work, sir? It's ended, <laughs> it's ended hasn't it? Um, and what's bad, I've not mentioned this to you guys, but um, today is my wedding anniversary. So, Aw. Well, was... tell Marie we said happy anniversary. Spike and blowjob night. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm doing Iron Realm. We are going away tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so on that, I just wanted to say, look, it's uh, when we were well, right, 2003, so it's it's 15, um, what is it, 16 years married. So we've been together since 96, so 23 years together, I suppose. And um, Marie, babe, I love you so much more now than yesterday, even. You know, and thanks for everything. And 
more importantly, I'm, I am blessed. blessed. Somebody that supports me with my crazy ass crusade. So thank you, darling. I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Well, speaking of celebrations, Chuckles over here is celebrating his birthday today. One Mr. Zachary, too nice for rice. The nomad, nomad, Mr. Stave Push, Marf Mel Marshmallow Man. Beautiful. Happy birthday, sir. Well, thank Happy you. Birthday. Thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah, the big 4-0 this year. Believe it or not, I'm one-third of the way through my, uh, my this life's adventure. I'm going to be 120, so I, I got 80 years left. I, there's no need to celebrate yet. I'll celebrate at 60 when I'm halfway through. <laughs> and that's that's 120 years barring any large tidal waves, yes? Yeah, yeah. I, I'll be out of Florida hopefully before the tidal wave comes, and I'll be in a nice, highly elevated area near Croatia, hopefully. I don't know. i got to check the elevation of the capital city of Croatia now that you mentioned that. But yeah, <laughs> no, I should be good. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Again, I, I said it this morning, but do give your mom our best, considering this is her day. Yeah. All you did was slide out of a uterus. Yeah, I just, so I just took the push, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let her know, though. Thank you. Speaking of this morning, I'm also joined by my co-host from the Iron Works over on Truth Frequency Radio 1, Mr. Walter Johnson. Walt, look at you bringing up the tail end. How are you doing today? Good morning, everyone. Or it's afternoon, evening. or evening. Who knows <laughs> anymore at this point? At so, at this point, people in the chat are convinced it's November the eighth. So, I'm not the only <laughs> one at a time frame of confusion here. But it's Friday, my dude, and we have a lot to get to. So I will say hello, and I'm done. <laughs> well, that was it. All right, and then rounding out because damn it, if I didn't almost forget, <laughs> he's hanging down there on the bottom of the ball with that big red face. Almost forgot, Rob. Rob, thanks for joining us. It's not often we get to have you two weeks in a row. Was it, it might even be three at this point. Yeah, I'll try and join as much as I can these days. But um, no, very uneventful week other than um, I had a call from my mate who watched the Netflix documentary. And he said, um, I said, so what would you think? He said, yeah, it was entertaining. Didn't sway him one bit, obviously, because there's not much in there to um, sway any um, person. But at least he's looking. At least he's looking. If, if the documentary did anything, at least it made people have a, have a look, didn't it? It definitely made people take a look. You had to mention it, didn't you? I've not taken a look yet. <laughs> Still no, not no, seen it. I have not either. <laughs> not, not all people. Not this person, but some people. I, I, think, I, I think you've already been swayed, but John, haven't you? Yeah, it's a ball. Spinning, <laughs> spinning. Moving on. Well, all right then. Well, I guess that's all of all of our fellas here tonight. Since I finally did remember to get Rob in, so let's just jump right in with this week's announcements. We've got Dee Dee and Gary here to make some announcements for all of the stuff they got going on. So I am now going to hand the conch over to whichever one of them would like to do it. Let's, you know, I'm going to hand it over to Dee Dee because I think Dee Dee needs to speak up a little bit. I haven't heard of her much yet this evening. So I'm going to hand it over to Didi. Didi, welcome back to the show. Thanks for joining us again. Hey, everybody. Thank you for having me again. It's always it's exciting. <laughs> always a pleasure, Didi. Yes, it's always a pleasure to have you in here. So tell us what we got going on this week. What kind of news you got for us? What's the update? Well, it's another Friday, so that means a new announcement. And this week it's uh, Amsterdam's turn. So we announced uh, today our, uh, our newest speaker for the Amsterdam convention. It's Paul on the plane. He will be at the <laughs> boat, so he's going to be a busy man in September. But <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Paul, yeah, Paul's been busy the last two years. It's like that guy is nothing but stay busy. I'm pretty sure he even has like a real life, like with family and a job and stuff. I don't know where in the world he gets all this energy from. But I think that's going to be super awesome. So what, what are we I getting did, from I, Paul then? That's the question. Could we ask him? I believe there's an ice princess that just moved into his house. <laughs> I had seen. Ooh, my ex-wife? 
That was one of the cutest things I ever saw, Paul. That was oh, awesome. She was a queen. That's different. <laughs> so, sorry, I didn't know if I was supposed to jump in there or not, but thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. Happy birthday to you and happy anniversary, John. Man, we're celebrating a bunch of stuff today. So uh, big happy Friday to everybody. Yeah, big. that's wild. You got married on my birthday. It's... What are the chances, you know? No, you were born on his anniversary. <laughs> yeah, true. True. <laughs> It was always destined, you see, by anniversaries. So technically, even though it was after. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, welcome back. It's good to have you back on the Have No Sphere here in the Iron Realm. It's been at least a few months, I think, at this point. Yeah, it's been a while. But uh, no, thanks for having me back. And I'm super, super stoked to uh, be joining the, the team there in Amsterdam in September. So thanks again to Gary and and Didi for allowing me the opportunity. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I really am hoping I can stay in the slot that they have me so far. I know it's uh, early and it's uh, it's uh, just something on paper right now, but being able to kind of lead things off maybe before the debate on the on the uh, first day, um, I, I think that's a great time to maybe you know provide some remarks to kind of set the stage and set the tone and. That's a, it's an opportunity I don't take lightly. So I'm really excited about that for sure. So can't wait. Cannot wait. You've done conferences before, haven't you? Uh, I just got back from uh, Southern California with the Question Everything conference. So uh, uh, yeah, what was that all about? Well, that was a, that was a conference put on by uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of Joe Garcia and, and his wife, Elisa. So they, they live down there in Southern California. And he you know, he was seeing all the conferences going on and he was like, you know what, there's not just not a lot on the West Coast here of the U.S. So he took it upon himself just to start something. And um, he rented out a, you know, rented out a, a, a room and, you know, um, had the dinner before and, you know, the speakers and, and what he did, what his whole premise was, was, these are the questions that he had when he was kind of on his truth journey. And so uh, it was talking, he had speakers on um, uh, CBD oils, vaccines. Uh, homosexuality, um, flat Earth, of course, and um, the moon landing hoax was the was the one that I was asked to come and present on. So he had all of these questions, um, and then each of the speaker was given a question to to kind of answer, and and that's what the conference was for basically two two days. Uh, Mark Sargent was there, Robbie Davidson was there, a couple other people you might uh, you might recognize, you know their names, but uh, we just got back from that here at the end of February. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And then, yeah, I did a, I did a workshop at the um, Flat Earth Conference in uh, Denver last fall um, with my TFR co-host Noxy. So that would probably be the ex extent of the uh, of the workshops on uh, you know on this uh, this particular subject, so to speak. And that's where you you met Zach, didn't you? There. Yes, that's right. Got to meet Zach in Denver. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> cool to hang yeah, out we didn't get to hang out too much i was working most of the time but he was working i saw him yeah. kind of uh, he was working the door and he was doing a great job too keeping the riffraff out right uh, yeah doing my part but yeah if, if you have a chance like i was saying before you don't even have to go into the convention if you can just get near oh there's the queen herself sorry do it mr mom duty my wife's out of town right now so i'm uh I'm, I'm Mr. Mom and got to go pick up the other two kids from school here. And it's, uh, yeah, it never stops, but I love it. Mr. Mom. I haven't heard that Oops. one before. That's like a real Mr. Mom. That's a Michael Keaton movie. That was from awesome. The 80s. Yeah. Got the beard, put on a couple of pounds. <laughs> you just need the just final, need the final shirt. shirt. That's the right. <laughs> and about eight balls worth of cocaine for you to catch up. Huh. Oh, <laughs> I've been Sorry, Mr. Okay. Mum all this time. I didn't know what it was called. There you go. I'm called Mr. Mom. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm not full time Mr. Mom. I'm going to give my wife the credit. But when she's gone, this place goes to pot quick. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we're trying to hold it together until she gets back on Sunday. I could I could see you more as a Tootsie, Tom. As a Tootsie? <laughs> no, Just I'm far more of a Hutu. Uh, that's right. I was trying to think. That was like the b biggest first transgender movie, right? I think so. Kind of set the stage about dressing up, you know, change, kind of changing, changing things up a bit. Well, there was Tom Hanks, and they had the TV show Bosom Buddies. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. But I'm not sure if that was pre Tootsie. Find my my mute button. Yes, that was pre Tootsie. That was that was. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it, back to the just just back to the convention. I don't want to I don't want to downplay this. I mean, this is just a great opportunity, and the speakers that that Dee Dee and Gary have already got lined up, and I got a chance to kind of. Give, see a little bit of the venue that's going on and that's going to be going on there in Amsterdam. Um, man, this thing's going to be first class. So uh, hopefully they'll talk a little bit more about that. Any, uh, any updates there, but uh, you know, this is going to be a great opportunity and already a lot of great speakers and the, you know, the globe light tour, you know, being, you know, uh, going through there and all of that stuff. So, I mean, this is just going to be one, one amazing event, no question. So very, very excited. I'm I'm buzzing, mate. I've got to be honest. When when it was announced, you were going. I found out a bit before. Again, to be able to meet up with somebody that you've known. Well, when was it? A few years ago, wasn't it? it must be now when me, you, and Savage had a chat. Um, it's just amazing. I think it's it's absolutely fantastic. And, and thanks, Gary. Thanks, Steve. Because without your efforts, guys, shit doesn't happen. You know, it's brilliant. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean the the amount of work that goes on to put one of these on, I just got to be. I mean, I, I I can't relate. So um, it's it's no small feat. Something you don't throw together in a weekend. I mean, it's a it's a year long thing, I'm sure. So uh, it, it, very cool how they're just kind of you know leaking a little bit here and there as we you know as we as things kind of build up. Uh, just just building the hype. I, I just think this is going to be one amazing event. And you know we got the the other convention, the uh, the Globe Light uh, UK you know, event, you know, two weeks before that too. So, I mean, I mean, and then with the tour going through all of Europe, I mean, the, the fall in the continent is just, I mean, the whole place is going to get flat smacked. It's going to be great. Looking yeah, forward. we're just really excited to Paul to have you with us because uh, the team only gets bigger and stronger and you're, you're looking forward to September. That's for sure. And since you have both conventions coming up, uh, uh, for people who go to bold conventions, uh, we just want to point out that there will be always something, uh, something interesting and new. You're not going to do the the same presentation twice. You said so. If people are going to bold conventions, you're always going to see more from Paul. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, not going to do any re repeats. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be very fun. Uh, although if I did, the, the Amsterdam would be much better because it would be the second it would be you know the second time so i'd be more much more polished but uh no it'll obviously be uh be some new material so looking forward to kind of starting to come up with that framework here uh you know the next couple of months and working with gary and Didi on that and making sure we're on the same page and then yeah it's going to be a lot of fun come uh, come september i can't wait we're probably going to be my, I'm, I'm probably the whole family is just going to kind of go over to Ireland for the month of September and then um, going to be kind of going back and forth over to uh, England and then to and then to Amsterdam, you know, uh, later in the month. So we're going to kind of set up set up shop over there in Europe anyway for the month. So have you got a broad topic that you're going to cover? Nope. Absolutely not. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, no, because you know what? There, there's so much that can happen between now and then. I mean, um, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend a lot of time just just yet on trying to narrow that. I mean, I've got some ideas. Don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of great ideas. I think, but uh, you know, I'll be working with Gary and Dee and and making sure we're all on the same page, like I said. But you know, in the next couple of months, that's gonna that's gonna formulate. There's a lot of stuff that's going on right now that you know I think uh, are a lot of things that can happen between now and then too that might play into that so well, i liked it when a man says with confidence i'm going to set the tone i look forward yeah to yeah that's what i want to do i mean that when i saw dd sent over like you know this is kind of a you know this is just kind of what we're thinking it's not set in stone and i was like man i like i like that going on maybe kind of first thing there on on the first day and then i know the debate which everybody's looking forward to um you know being a majority of that first day but being able to maybe present before that that's that's the tone setter right that's that's the one that comes in and kind of kicks things off and that's uh an opportunity that i would sure like to sure like to uh to have no question well, well i'll tell you what paul it's um a day is a long time in the flat earth the way things are going at the moment so uh, i think you're you're probably right but we haven't heard from gary have we we turn the gary tron on 
Oh yeah. Hi everyone. Hello, Gary. Hello to everyone in the chat. Yep. And to Gary and Didi, I think you guys had a made a great choice by having Paul kick it off. Just well, a yeah. wonderful Paul, presenter. Keep, one, one keep, confirmed, right? keep, keep yeah. pressuring them so they don't move me. So yeah, keep, keep speaking <laughs> it into existence. <laughs> Paul will be first. And uh, Paul is also Paul the very will. first person to um, actually be presenting on both events, because even though Roxanne is um, is the host in the UK and Martin Nika is obviously taking part as a um, presenter in the UK convention and also he's doing a little bit of a thing on the Friday night um, in Amsterdam, Paul is the first person um, that is, is that actually... Yeah, probably the only person actually is actually going to be presenting on the main days on both events. Unless I've got that wrong. Yeah, and as we said, it's seven months away, so there's going to be so much happening in seven months. Two conventions are not going to be enough to, to talk about everything. So it's going to be a very, very busy month in September. Yeah, for sure. I think you're so very Paul wise, Paul, not planning too early your speech. It could be. It could be written up about four or five times. Well, by the time. <laughs> if you think about it, Paul, if you'd have actually written your, your presentation a week ago, it would already be out of date. Well, yeah, and that's that's the danger, obviously. I mean, I've got some ideas already, and you know, as the next couple of months go by, I'm going to be bouncing those off you guys. But um, there just there's just so many different things that I'm interested in that I'd like to expand on potentially. But yeah, there could be something that happens, you know, in the next couple of months, you know, five six months from now that, you know, might just warrant it, you know, there being some remarks or something that are part of, you know, part of that presentation. So we got to be obviously somewhat flexible, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I could put something together right now, but, uh, and spend a lot of time on it and polish it or whatever. But yeah, like you said, you know, 90 days from now, I might want to go a totally different direction. We, we might all want to be, you know, have, have you know, topics, some different topics. So we're going to have to play it by ear and, uh, That'll be fun. We'll uh, we'll be flexible for sure, and make sure that we're we're hitting a home run when we when we get there. Yeah. Well, from what well, from what I've heard though, that from a comment anyway that I saw, I think today. Um, now now that we've got commercial space travel, then this flat Earth thing's just not going to be around for that much longer. So uh, we, we better make the most of it. Hope, hopefully, it doesn't collapse in the next seven months. But. <laughs> mm. Well, once we get one of those space potatoes back from the Chinese, I can't wait to sample one. But yeah, that's that's going to be game, right? Hopefully it's not petrified wood. <laughs> you guys aren't keeping up with current events, are you? Have you seen the Green New Deal? We're not going to have airplanes. There's no more flying in air. There's no more going to space. There's no having airplanes anymore. We're just going to be driving around, walking around and sailing in boats. Yeah, no more no more commercial transportation. Yeah, <laughs> air, air, air travel anyway. That's right. So, Paul, have you been to Amsterdam before? I have. I was there a couple of years ago for work. Um, it was uh, it was a short it was short lived. Probably there for three or four days. Uh, it was business meetings and uh, didn't get to see much of the town. So looking forward to spending a little bit more time there for sure. And uh, you know the the venue that that Gary and Didi have kind of settled on, you know, being uh, kind of looking at the map and stuff. You know, being real close access to to downtown, but being a little bit outside of town. You know, really kind of gives you the the ability, I think, to, to see a lot of the city and, and get a lot of the culture and not just, you know, kind of flying in, going to an airport, you know, and kind of missing a lot of potentially the culture of the area and seeing it. So um, I think they've chosen something that's really special and going to allow you to kind of experience the uh, experience, the city, experience the region a little bit, too, than just, you know, just some airport hotel. So. Can't cool. wait. I, I just want to interject on two things. One is Didi has to have the, all the credit for the venue because she's the one who actually went there. And I mean, we actually, about a year and a half ago, um, we actually went to Amsterdam to research and went to several venues. Um, and Didi then went back there a few months ago and actually come across this one. And it seemed to fit the bill with the, you know, with the, the look and the, the technical, you know, and it's, this seemed to be a very great bunch. And we're looking forward, Didi and I are going there in April. But I, I noticed the other day you were on a hangout and I noticed that you find certain words very hard to pronounce. So I want to try and teach you something. Can you actually say after me, John Savage, we need to see you in Amsterdam. Can you try that? <laughs> John Savage, need to see you in Amsterdam. Great. Can you put that over to him? <laughs> <laughs> he, won't, he, won't, he will not come over. And Keep we trying, eh? 
Keep trying. <laughs> He's a troublemaker anyway. I wouldn't I wouldn't have him there. He's a troublemaker. Yeah, every Rob, Rob will go. Come on. Every two weeks I ask, you know, I'm trying to like lean on him. You try. Like, have you asked him what it's going to take? I mean, what's what's the, you know, what's, uh, you got to meet him halfway, right? I mean, what does he want out of the deal? Got to sweeten the pot, right? I think he, I think he needs to try and get rid of his boobs first. That's probably the first thing. Um, and there's other, another thing, but it'd be too embarrassing to say on air. So. <laughs> I could show up in hologram. How's that? Savage. <laughs> Rob. Savage. Rob, you're going, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'd get in trouble if I went there. <laughs> Rob, you're going to New Zealand uh, next month. No. What's happening in New Zealand? No, oh, just a fly earth conference. All right, have one up in North Queensland and I'll um <laughs> and I'll attend it. He'll only go. One. He'll only go. You're gonna organize it. Hey, right, Paul. The thing is, you see there, right? It's not that far. It's only a plane flight. He'll only go if I think he's gonna be organizing his local community center. Cause I reckon if you organize one here, I'd go and then there might be Ross. The bloke I used to work with. There'd be two of us there. Be a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of stubbies. Yeah. Never the optimist. <laughs> Not a fun, this is what a convention is all about. Coming together, having a laugh, just messing around and it's ten it's not people the same. on, on, on yeah. this chat, but when you come together with a couple hundred, it's... I don't think it's the same in this country as others yet. It's, it just hasn't... There's not many of us. I, just, I don't think there is anyway. I don't think there's many of us, so... Plenty of ballers. Yeah. There's more than you think, I bet. I bet you'd be surprised. Well, you look at... You know, you, you keep hearing that, um, well, 2% of uh, the U.S., uh, flat earthers now, and that's six million people. That's a quarter of Australia's population. That's unbelievable. You know, you can easily do conventions when you got that sort of um, when you got that sort of numbers. But um, here, it's still if you mention it, you still get ridiculed bad. You know, it's I think it's becoming more mainstream in America. I think it's just becoming more more of the norm. Not here, not here. You can't you can't talk about it here. I've tried. I gave up. Could you not try like a dual convention? I, mean, I don't know, like flat earth and sheep sharing. <laughs> That'd pull them in, wouldn't it? I don't think they were shearing those sheep, Adam. What, 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 <laughs> whatever brings pop. the crowds is your second. Just make sure it's in a pub, it'll be full. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind a beer, but yeah, I don't think I just don't. It's not taking off the, here yet. Hopefully, it will. Hopefully, it will. I'll be front and center. If it takes off here, I'll be front and center. All right. Are, are you looking, Rob? Because you didn't even know there was one in New Zealand. That's only <laughs> over the road. Get your canoe out. New Zealand's about 5,000 kilometers from me. Thank yeah. you very much. Canoe That's a big out. road. There in a while. How many plane journeys is that? Uh, probably yeah, at least two to get there. But uh, yeah. What's the first one take? Probably Brisbane. Probably go to Brisbane and um, fly across, I'd say. Well done. How long would it take you to walk? And <laughs> 5,000 Ks. Oh, a couple of days. <laughs> That's a nice little pace you set, Rob. That's good stuff. Good swim. Oh, yeah. Rob's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm yeah. not bad. <laughs> Sell the house and get a yacht. Job done. Your talents are wasted behind a wheel. You'd be pulling a cart or something. How about you just leave me alone and get on with your shit? How about that? <laughs> hey, hey, how was this one, Rob? To take the, take the heat off you, uh, Nora suggested that uh, we do... Um, we try and raise money for John to go to Amsterdam. So if we did a GoFundMe, do you think if we did an extensive marketing campaign, we'd manage to get up to about five pounds? He loves, he would <laughs> love an appearance <laughs> fee. If you gave John an appearance fee, one to two million dollars, he would go. One to two million. <laughs> I bet he'd still say stick it. Yeah. No one's <laughs> you know me well, Zach. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> could have him at 1.3, I reckon. I don't need your money. Don't want your money. <laughs> Evan said it was 3.3 3. pounds. pounds. <laughs> I hit that super chat. And also on that, um, we've got 21 likes, guys. Anyone in the chat, then come on, we've got to get that number up. Bloody hell. I'm doing your job. <laughs> well, well done. I don't even like it. Yeah. And do it again. Thanks, Gary. I'm going to go grab some coffee. You just do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, I'm actually talking to you on my phone. I'm actually watching the chat on my PC, and it's about two seconds behind. I think everyone finds that. You know, I always find it uh, a little bit um, earlier. It's about six or seven seconds. It's really weird. Talk slower, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to do with that. It's just the actual visual. When I see... When you see something on your PC and then you see something on the phone, it's totally different. And what pearls of wisdom are, are you seeing in the chat? Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> AC. It's got here, yeah. uh, Flat Earth Aussie Jesus put three wankers unliked it, uh, which is now up to four. So uh... Flat Earth Aussie? <laughs> oh, that would be one of your lot then, Rob. Yeah, he's only about 2,000 kilometers away from me. Yeah. No, stop moaning. Do you That's know like him? nine hours. It's a nine-hour walk, Rob. What are you bitching about? Yeah, it's also been mentioned about sharing it, which I've already done, and a few other people like Nathan and a few others have shared. You need a virtual conference, Rob. You can borrow Zoom. And just leave me alone, which is come on. Off his, off his go. Oh, I love you, Rob. Well, there was a question if we're going to stop picking on Rob, are we? Are we? I don't know. Are we? <laughs> just before we carry on. As... I'm good. I'm done. Okay. For now. I like it when Rob comes on, takes the heat off me. I was going to ask DD. Before we do ramble on too much, so just maybe if we could do one quick, concise synopsis before we, and um, we promise not to interrupt of where we're up to so far. So at least Any when we replay business? it tomorrow, we know. <laughs> well, we launched like the 1st of January, and so far we have a uh, almost a full program up so it's going to be like a couple maybe a month six weeks until we have the full program up and then uh, we will start doing some some more promotion but for now we have uh, four speakers of the six conferred for the sunday so irland ducci roxanne glenn jaren and paul of course today join us for the debaters on saturday we have nathan oakley and uh, the other three debaters will be uh, announced in april or as soon as possible. We're still working on uh, on getting more more debaters for the for the globe side, of course. And then we have for the opening party on the Friday, it's gonna be Martin Lidke opening the show with a, a comedy act, so something totally different uh, from Martin. After that, we're gonna have the Globe Light Tour team. They're gonna talk about their two week travel they, they did in Europe. And then they will continue the Monday in Amsterdam with some activism and, and continue the tour. We also have Patricia Steer. She will host the open mic session on Friday, and we're going to end with a, with some dancing and a party, which uh, we have a, a great DJ for that. That's Mark Devlin joining us. So, so far, it's it's getting uh, pretty full quickly, and in two weeks, uh, we will have uh, another speaker to announce. So we will keep going until until it's September, which will be here quite quickly. You can find uh, you can find all this information on our website as well. It's uh, effieconvention.com. It's the last weekend of September this year, and tickets are about uh, 50, 55 for a day ticket and a hundred uh, euros for uh, for the whole weekend. So it would be great if if everybody would join us. They also have a chance to stay with us on the campsite. You can uh, you can book a TP or a cabin or. You can come with a tent however you like and, and stay with us on the campsite. If you want to go to a hotel, of course, you are free to do so. But uh, most of us will be staying on the campsite. So during the day, we'll have the convention. And at night, we'll have a campfire and uh, sing some kumbaya around the campfire or something. Have some fun. It will be a, 
it will be a very relaxed weekend and i hope uh, i hope to see so many people again because uh, i've met most of you and i'm hoping to uh, to meet a lot more people what about setting up a boxing ring <laughs> <laughs> Would you come then, John? <laughs> I'd be surely tempted. <laughs> uh, yeah, but hold on a minute, John. Can I just, um, I just need to expose your bullshit because <laughs> I remember you talking in the past about, oh, if we did one in Amsterdam, you will be really sorely tempted. <laughs> no, you misquote. I said I'd be very interested. <laughs> okay. And I'm still very interested. <laughs> well, yeah, in Amsterdam? Yeah. Okay, I'm very ask... interested in conventions in general. <laughs> <laughs> Although I won't be going, I'm still very oh, yeah. interested and think they're yeah. fantastic. I think they bring lots of strange people together. Strange people together. So you fit straight in then? <laughs> yeah, probably better than you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thing is, though, I've got seven months to wear you down. And I think I'm going to lose handsomely. <laughs> I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there's a bookies that take odds, then I would make a, a mint I'm backing against myself. But the the good thing I'd say on that, Gary, is you're getting to know him. <laughs> yeah. But we can't. Uh, at least I it's don't. We, lo we love you, John. At least I don't whinge like Rob. <laughs> Me. Here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> Pommy wanker. Could you imagine though, Rob, if you moaned like you? I don't mind, do I? Ever. Well, not this week. Sorry, DJ. We interrupted. We said we wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary. Well, right. actually, me and Gary are, are going next month to Amsterdam and uh, film some uh, some cabins on the campsite and stay there for a night and we'll go revisit the venue and just look at everything and spend okay. it there. Gonna shoot some B-roll, huh? Nice. That's that's the plan. <laughs> well, sounds like it's really rough having to go to Amsterdam and hang out. My heart goes out. <laughs> Yeah, we have to take one for you, right? <laughs> yes, you do. Somebody's got to do it. Might as well be you two. I think it's when, like when Paul was saying a couple of minutes ago that, uh, you know, there's a lot to put on these events. It does, it, you know, when people turn up, they just think it just happens. And obviously when we get knocked by people that, you know, oh, we're there, we're making money and we, you know, why don't we just get out new tent content and you know, work on other things and, they don't realize what if you want to have a good event and i know that robin has actually gone up to the uk convention you know the venue a few times and there's so many things to it that like you know even putting your show together uh, and it just seems to be that these people that you know knock you they're just hiding beyond their keyboard and i think it's a little bit frustrating but i suppose it's to be expected but um yeah, it's a shed load of work, but at the same time, working with you guys and like doing these promotions and the people that are going to turn up makes it all worthwhile, and especially the people that turn up and enjoy it. And um, like Didi said, we're look, really looking forward to it. Yeah, and we've learned a lot from uh, from Birmingham last year. The second time around is a little bit easier, but it's still a lot of work. There are a lot of wankers out there, though, aren't there, Gary? What What is their problem? Why can't they, if they don't like it? Why don't they just piss off and? go somewhere else what why do they have to sit around and constantly denigrate everyone put everyone down every all their efforts accusing them i mean it's go ahead i think i think there's two parts to this the one part is that um that flat earth you know because obviously it's all to do with that we've been lied to with 9 11 and the moon landings and jfk and you name it then obviously the flat earth has attracted a lot of people of which they're very skeptical inside and outside of flat earth so even within Flat Earth, I mean, I, I actually, it's funny, I actually get 99% of the attacks I have are from within, which I will, when, I, when it first happened um, doing the UK convention, um, it just blew me away because I was just really shocked that, you know, I, I expected some criticism, but I expected it to be from without, not from within. And the other thing is, it makes you wonder if some of these keyboard warriors um, are, are gatekeepers. Uh, are they there to actually try and control the narrative? And, um, you know, 
I don't believe that there's many, and I don't actually think that these people are going to be very well known in the sense that nothing's going to point towards them being the gatekeeper or, or a shit or whatever, because they're going to be very discreet on how they do it. So the people that are accused of it are probably less likely than to be the, than some of the ones that go under the radar. Yeah, I just see biting comments and, you know, just it just seems to bring out the nastiest yes behavior in people um yeah. and i think it's the same old adage isn't it when you're over over the target you're going to take on flack and and it, it's predictable it's it's childish it's pathetic really but um like you say it's it's <laughs> what you got to put up with really it is but unless your name's Dee, Dee and she she seems to and maybe i'm putting the kibosh on her now but she seems to get away with you know nothing ever comes her way so it's like i'm trying to get a Didi video made <laughs> indirectly. So, uh, yeah, she's been very lucky. Haven't you, Didi? <laughs> What's the secret, Didi? <laughs> she did say, but Didi, come on, you said to the other, me the other day, and you said it to me in the past, so you've got to tell people why. <laughs> I know, I can't see it on the left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Nobody's watching out there. Who are you? Yeah, no one's here. I so said the reason they don't attack me is because I have whoops. <laughs> that's, that's the reverse now, mate. I'm afraid. We don't believe you. Sorry. John, what's Wait, the reason? Dee Dee's got the same problem as uh, John Savage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th this is the main reason I, I like doing these events because there's so much crap online, and when you're actually around people and the whole weekend surrounded by by other flat earthers it just brings you up so much you're so much more motivated to to go at it at it again because if you stay on your computer too long you just get drained your, your energy yeah it makes it a lot less like work when there's all those people there doesn't it with that high amount of energy in the air and just in the room it's not even like you're working when you're at the conference go on then show us maybe for you since you're more of like an executive type but me just watching the door, I, I didn't get tired at all. And it was, I, when I got back to Chris's apartment, I, you know, I wasn't, I'd been out in the desert for four months or whatever, you know, walking around and taking it easy, kind of standing on my feet for like 12 hours straight. Six. That's why I, I came realized to how tired I was till I got home. Yeah, when you're doing the organizing, there's not much time to to really enjoy the convention. That's why I go to other conventions. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> go yeah, you seem to have a lot of fun in Denver. I always do, yeah. We got to chat a little bit, more so at the uh, bar afterwards. The after party. Fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I love that. I, I like the that's, idea that's of having fine. the after party before. I think that's a great idea you guys had, starting it with the party. It's a good idea. Once you get yeah. a couple of drinks into you, it's easier to talk to somebody. It's know. called the after party and it's before the convention starts. But <laughs> I just want to echo what uh, Didi was saying that uh, obviously we've done two conventions, as in one organized and the other one we attended. And I must admit, I lost my mojo a little bit last summer, partly down to obviously how much hard work the UK uh, was and obviously financially it hurt. And I was in two minds over the summer and I then thought, sod it, you know, I'm going to the uh, you know, Denver. And it was just absolutely amazing. So when these people knock it for not turning up, you know, they just think, well, what's the point? I'm not going to learn anything. There's so much more to it than that. And it was a magical weekend for me. And I loved it. And meeting you, Zach, and, and by the way, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Gary. Yeah, appreciate it. I must admit, you do look a lot older than 40, so I, I, maybe I've, I've um, overstepped my mark now. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did look a lot older than 40 when I was at the conference. I had my big white beard, and I was kind of rustic looking. Yeah, he looks like a baby like tall, face. A little more white. When he's shaved, he's just a little baby again. Yeah, that was one of the biggest mind fucks I had with Zach was knowing yeah. Zach with the beard and then all of a sudden seeing him shave. <laughs> I really didn't know who it was at first. And then I had to look real close and listen to him. I said, holy hell, that little baby faced kid is Zach. Yes. <laughs> go on well, then, show us your boobs then, Gary. Well, I can only do this, John, if you go first. If you, just show, <laughs> if you show your face on, on camera for four seconds, 
I will I will go topless. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, this is it. Everybody get no, ready. Yeah, but what can I just say though that I know that I'm absolutely safe here. You are. Don't worry. I am safe. <laughs> you, that is definitely a safe, safe bet, Gary. Yes, it is. You keep what? your boobs to yourself. What? But I would say that if all of us went topless for literally five seconds, we would probably get most of us all right. And then all of a sudden we're going to hit a problem, aren't we? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, for three seconds, I'll go bottomless. <laughs> oh, uh, can I just say that I'm, I'm a bit busy. I'll, go, I'll just go off and um, paint my toenails. <laughs> I'll dress and drag and do the hula if John shows his face. <laughs> no needs that. <laughs> <laughs> So Just we're having a reverse bed. auction oh, okay. on body parts. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? Yeah. <laughs> bacon, yup, 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 yup. For yep. some bacon, yup, 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 yup. You got it. Do my oh. hair. Yeah. Uh, lion King. Yep. Timon and Pumbaa. That's good stuff. So I got a message. Well, I had two messages. One message was from Travis from Red Hen Radio. Make sure you head on over to the Red Hen Radio channel on YouTube and subscribe. He's got some awesome stuff coming out. Uh, the most recent one, I think he had Mark Doxy doing an interview with uh, Mark Stevens, which was awesome. Uh, he's always got cool stuff. So head on over to the Red Hen Radio channel. That is R-E-D-H-E-N-N, one word, space, radio, or Red Hen Radio. But Travis sent me a message and said, Adam, you are low so i don't know if you need to scooch up closer to the microphone or if you can control your mic levels independently which i said you were a little low then message number two is regarding our second half of the show jimmy jean from into the microcosms now back on truth frequency radio this time thursdays at 8 p.m pacific 10 p.m central uh, got called into work. He was going to be a guest, come and promo his new show. He's been off off TFR for a couple months, uh, but he's back on with the co-host Rock and Rio, or maybe just Rio now. But uh, he was going to come on and talk about his new show and what he's been up to during his uh, brief sabbatical. But he got called into work and will not be joining us for the second half of the show. So uh, that, that really opens things up for us, so to speak. That's a shame. Yeah, I was, definitely, I was definitely looking forward to that, man. I, we kind of thought we might have him this morning on TFR with us, and that didn't work out. So I was excited for this afternoon. Well, hopefully you'll see. We'll see you soon, Jimmy Jean. And maybe Rock and Rio can show up as well. Absolutely. Um, and there's this chance he may still pop on. He said if he gets home at some sort of reasonable time, he may still try to come on. But, you know, no big deal. Again, we, we do have Tuesdays and Fridays over on the Ironworks, also on Truth Frequency Radio. So plenty of space for him to come and talk. And he can go for hours. Hours. That man's got so much knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm good. Indeed. I'm good, John. Yeah, you are a bit quiet, Adam. Probably this mic. Something else will be packing up now, won't it? <laughs> shout out to everybody in chat there's quite a crew there in chat hello everybody i'm not gonna start throwing names around but we appreciate you all share like sub you know what to do go on give us a couple of names because i can't see the chat so i won't do it won't do it if i start it'll be a list four miles long have you finished Dr. your iron stick, Adam? I see Gary John Heather in chat. Shout out to Gary John Heather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's getting everywhere, isn't he? <laughs> Shout out to Arwen, Cindy Hollins, NASA lies about everything, AJM, Flat Earth Aussie Jesus. Who else we got in here? Martin Liedka, Effie Viking, Walter Williams. Hello. Skull. Sorry, I had to get Boy that out. Who else? Let's see. Ace, Ace McLeod, have you mentioned him? Yeah, First. I started with Ace. Oh, you owe Rune. me Ace. Rune Thorson. Did I see a Rune in there? Yeah. Thanks again, man, for donating to the pressure gradient test that I'd like to try to do. Much appreciated. Stan Smith, Roxanne Glenn, if you're still in there. How's that going, Zach? 
Um, I haven't checked it in a while. I, I think I only have the one that Room gave me. Space is fake. So, I mean, I'll leave it out there for another couple of weeks. And if nothing happens, I'll just close it and everybody will, will get their money back. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw out there and see if anybody wanted to have that test done. And Well, it's a litmus test, isn't it? If they want it done, they want it done. If they don't, they yeah. don't. Yeah, that's all you can do. What were you saying about Adam's stick, Didi? Whoa, that just took a left turn. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what was it? Is this how, how many seconds have I got to show it for? <laughs> one second, real quick. Shout out also to Nora, no one's flower, and A McKenzie. Shout out to A Mac. Cindy. I think Cindy Holland came over from our uh, simulcast over there on Facebook. She saw it on our Facebook live show on our Facebook page and I think came over to YouTube to the chat. That's pretty awesome. Nice. Thanks. Shout out to Cindy. She Powerland was in chat a minute ago. Shout out. Still trying to get you and Matt yes, on with us soon. Since before <laughs> you and Matt were together, actually. So, right. Yes. I remember <laughs> taking that road trip. I'm going to go marry him. Oh yeah. yeah, are you really? Okay. Yeah, right. And she did. She showed did up. She? She... <laughs> anyway, shout out. And I just saw Ant pop up in there. Uh, I went sure on that, but not microphone troubles this flat. morning. I saw this morning the microphone troubles you were having. I'm sorry to see that. Looks like could you got to work that. Could I should suggest a novel idea? Could we actually do, a, uh, for the next two hours, do a shout out to all the people that are not in chat? Yeah, go. Let me grab my phone. <laughs> Start with we'll Mr. Chaswick. Nice to be fair, actually, I've been back and forth with him over the last few days, and we seem to have got to a, a mutual understanding. So, um, you know, it seems to be okay. So, I know that's not normal for uh, people that get attacked, but I, I've been transparent, and I think he's appreciated it. So, all good. Odd that you have to in any way justify yourself, mate. You can have spurious accusations thrown against you and there's a need for you in some way to have to respond to them. I think it's very odd behaviour from someone who professes to be honest and genuine and then their yeah. behaviour doesn't match it. Um, I mean, if if he is innocent, and I would I'd like to try and see the best in people um, if I can. Um, there's obviously a couple of schools of thought, isn't it? Like you almost like you trust people until you find that you can't trust them, or you do it the other way around, and you just assume that everyone's the enemy until they prove otherwise. So he's just got a slightly different approach to me, and I'm not saying that my approach is right, but um, you know, all I've ever said to him, the, the theme running through it is, you know, if he's going to write about me. Is just do everything with honesty and integrity, and and to be fair to him, I I actually gave a reply last night. He'd come back today and said, really appreciates it. Thank you very much. And um, I even said, by all means, make a video number three because obviously, if I can get a bit, I don't have to do my own YouTube channel. <laughs> I'll just get other people to make it for me. So, uh, but um, no, we seem to be all good, and you know, probably on to, to the next person now, and um, and. Just on a side note, I just really want to just uh, mention that there's somebody in Flat. I mean, loads of people in Flat Earth are doing a lot of work, but there's one person in particular that I just want to give a shout out at this moment. That I I contact this person quite regularly, and we're talking about lots of things, and he's touching so many people in so many ways. And I want to give out a shout out to Tony Riley that he's doing an amazing amount of work on so many fronts that I'm impressed with how he does Indeed. it, and and his his enthusiasm is amazing. So I'm I'm saying it from me to him, and I know that I was talking to Roxanne about it yesterday and a few other people, that we just really appreciate what he's doing. And don't get me wrong, that's not taking away any work from anyone else, but he seems to be trying to connect so many people, and I just think it's very impressive. Thanks for touching people, Tony. Wait. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Anthony, but you're a terrorist sympathizer. Uh, Zach, I thought we were not going to say this on this show. I thought that was going to be... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the cat is back I'm sorry, Gary. It's it's slipped. <laughs> so I do have a request. Um, 
Well, here's the thing. I heard that you can't really play the happy birthday song because people expect royalties. So I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike for playing the happy birthday song. But I did get a request for people to sing happy birthday to Zach. And I'm not one to disappoint. I'll go ahead and kick it off. We're going to do it acapella style. Everybody just jump in. <laughs> <and> <laughs> the that was beautiful guys thank you <laughs> i'll never ever forget that one. Oh my goodness <laughs> That, that was, was straight from Travis to you. <laughs> oh, you should have heard the one Travis made for me earlier. I don't know if I can play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was good. I was crying. I was laughing so hard. I love you, Trav. Oh, thank you, guys. That was awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. Stephen Hawking wishes you a happy birthday. <laughs> oh, he's a wonderful man. Happy birthday, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, was that planned? Or did you just on the fly right there, Josh? That was, that was spur great. of the moment. Oh. He sent me a message on Facebook <laughs> telling me to check my Skype. When I checked my Skype, he had added that message saying, you need to have Stephen Hawking sing happy birthday to Zach. And I thought, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, we're all going to <laughs> All right, what else we got? Well, I was thinking, John. We're all witty twitty. One's for dancing around his stick. One is for dancing around his shtick. <laughs> oh, God, where are we going? I thought maybe there was a temporary OBS cut out in the middle of that, so I'm happy with it. Um, I didn't panic this time, Josh. I didn't panic. I think, oh, you got it. Adam, I just saw in the yeah. chat that we're apparently all. Just okay. for a second, we should be back. I will say we've been running strong for 100% of the time over on our Facebook page. Live simulcast. Make sure you head on over there and give the page a like. We've got about 20, 25 likes over the last year and a half. But to be fair, I don't really do much with it. It just sort of automatically posts things, cross posts from Twitter or from, well, YouTube doesn't do it anymore. But I'm trying to get a little more active over there. If anybody wants to be a mod, let me know. Could sure use some activity on our Iron Realm Media Facebook page. And you know, I thought about that this week, Josh. That we need somebody who's already in to Facebook and does things Facebookily <laughs> to help us on Facebook because you and I definitely are not Facebookians. This is true. Yeah, I bet you we could come up with somebody. Didn't you I have Matt you. Landman on your show recently? Yes, an amazing. We Amazingly organized gentleman. Yes, indeed, John. <laughs> <laughs> and what an awesome show it was, too. Again, I wasn't sure how well-received we would be, given how unprofessional we are. <laughs> we try to provide a relaxed environment, but sometimes that just comes off as sloppy and disorganized. So what relaxed, you fall asleep. <laughs> right? <laughs> but no, I think it went really well. Uh, a great conversation. Again, that guy is so busy. He's just been super active. Um, and again with chemtrails, something that I've always been pretty passionate about. And now he's on the five G kick, which is just super scary and the sort yeah. of horrible things that might happen once that gets fully ramped up. But he's all over um Facebook. He is. He's also a movie producer. <laughs> you know, he did Franken Skies about chemtrails. He's like I said, he's active. He's giving talks in front of city councils. He's going out doing all sorts of stuff. So um, I don't need, know if I can get him to be a mod on our Facebook page. So we need some unemployed penniless bum that sits on Facebook all day. Gotcha. Yeah, most of them are ballers though. <laughs> No, no, I think there's a few people. people. And it's not like Walt isn't on Facebook or Adam's not on Facebook. They couldn't contribute, but it's whatever. I can do it all. It's cool. I have an account. I, I share I, this show and our Tuesday and our Friday morning show every Tuesday and Friday morning, sir. If that's just, not enough Facebooking for you, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> 
took me weeks to get rid of my Facebook account. Not going back on that. And I only got on because my mom wanted me to. <laughs> then I got sucked into all kinds of other stuff. Speaking of which, big shout out to my mom over on Facebook. She is actually watching the Facebook live simulcast right now on the Iron Row Media Facebook page. So, hi, Ma. I see you in there. Oh, that's awesome. Hi, Mom. Hi, Josh's mom. <laughs> hi, Josh's mom. <laughs> hi, Mom of Josh. Ooh. Freeman talk. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> I'm taking her at her word. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, you're my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, mother. I'm gonna start calling her that. <laughs> Going off subject, are you guys interested in what happened at uh, Oxford University the other day? No, nah, not really. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Go on, go on, Gary. Tell us, tell us oh, all about it. Oh, you're interested now. Uh, uh, well, there's no, a couple not really. Of, there was a couple of things. I um, I wanted to. Um, I asked them if they could provide a ball or a globe. And, um, and, and luckily for us, they actually provided a globe. And uh, Roxanne looked underneath. And I couldn't remember exactly um, what it said, because um, it's one of those generic terms that's always on the bottom of globes. It's not for educational purposes. And um, as soon as the, the uh, Roxanne pointed it out to her, she was frantically spending the next couple of minutes uh, busily trying to scratch off the label, even though we said, oh, it's no problem, it's fine, leave it as it is, because obviously that's how it came. Oh, and she was adamant. And, you know, Roxanne have, have spoken, uh, and I have spoken about it since. Um, but anyway, we went there and uh, Ruben uh, Jimilo uh, came with us as well. And they wouldn't allow us to actually have three of us um, doing the debate because they wanted to make it even. Bearing in mind, there were 60 people in the room um, or about 62, I think. There was the the moderator who was very, very, you know, controlling and tried to be controlling, uh, but she obviously had a job to do. We had um, about 59, 60 um, from the university that obviously were totally in the system. And then you had the three of us. So um, Ruben and I did our thing. They did their thing. And, and, and you know, it was difficult to know exactly what to say and what to put over to them. And obviously I'm not skilled in debates like this because I've not done that many um, but when they then did their bit then I absolutely got fired up with lo loads of questions I want to ask them I mean they're very indoctrinated very much into the gravity very much into the Coriolis effect and everything else that was quite amazing but one of the things that came out that was quite uh, um, blew me away is you know you, have you you obviously seen the video where you got the the allegedly the earth and you got the really dodgy looking moon going across um, from left to right and I said to the I said to the audience I said okay so let's just bear this in mind the earth is lit so that means the sun is behind us that means the moon should be white and it's gray and it's not spinning and it looks the most fakest things out there and and the, the one thing I found I don't know if Roxanne and Ruben can back me up on the same is basically you put a po point to them and they didn't really answer it and and it wasn't basically time was against us. But one of the things uh, that came or two things that come out of it, but indirectly, the one that's direct is actually um, they've invited us back to and um, quote unquote to come and see an experiment of the spinning earth. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So we're going to try and get a few people down there to to be there to rip them a new one. And subsequently, um, or ironically, um, I know that. Um, I don't know if I'm speaking out of line here, I don't know how to turn, but I don't think I am, is that Robin's been contacted by a few universities and allegedly Dave has been contacted by universities as well. And um, and we're trying to, you know, with Tony as well, we're trying to put together a little, like, a little team of uh, people that can actually maybe start targeting these universities to try and get in under, the, under their skin, really. So, um, yeah, so there seems to be some good things coming from it, hopefully. Two questions, Gary. Did you record it? Not allowed, but go on. Sorry, not allowed? Not allowed, but, Rox <laughs> but Roxanne did record it. Thank you. <laughs> and and uh, the, the, girl, the, the moderator was not impressed, so Roxanne loved it because obviously it's like sticking Excellent. up. Uh, yeah. Excellent. And um, did you meet anyone that was an Oxford... Um, I don't know what to call them. That's nice. Student um, that 
sort of took you aside or secretly said, you know, I'm I'm with you, love you, <laughs> love the stuff, I'm a flat earther, anyone, anyone at all? Um, the closest we got, the answer to that is no, but the closest we got, we got this uh, Viking looking guy coming up to us. And when we I w- we were talking about the, the actual, um, the alleged globe with the moon going across, he said, yeah, I must admit that did look pretty fake. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, and I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but I just said, I just said two words after that he said as you know, fake, and I just said as fuck. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, it's really seriously fake. Um, but no, apart from that, I mean, it's funny actually because I'm, I'm saying to them, you know, I'm, I'm a, I believe in the non-spinning globe, meaning non-spinning and non-globe. And a few of them say, oh great, you're with us then. No, I think you missed the point. So basically, <laughs> a, glo- a globe denier like, uh, like Roxanne. So, and, and I don't know about you guys, but you know, I'm more not believing in the globe than saying I'm a flat earther. Even though I am a flat earther, it's like that's the best representation of what I believe. But in reality, I I know what it isn't, not what it is. I appreciate that. I'm kind of the opposite. I mean, it's you know, as Nathan would say, it's obviously and observably flat but there's really no way to necessarily prove the shape of the earth. So I'll call myself a flat earther, even though I may not necessarily say, Hey, I know, I believe the earth is flat. I won't say that, but I'll call myself a flat earther. If only for a reason, just to make people turn around and say, what the fuck did you just say? You're what? And then I'll be able to get into, well, you know, maybe not flat per se, but I got a strong case as to why it's not a big spinny space pair. I think I think a lot of it is down to the fact that a lot of people get so triggered, and I understand what you're saying, but some people just switch off. and And I remember at the uh, the last year's convention in um, in Birmingham that I was having a chat with, uh, I think a few of us, Didi and a few others were there, and we were talking to um, Robbie Davison, and he was saying that when you're talking to somebody, really you need to talk about the potential moon landing hoax first, because if they can't get past that, then it's no point talking to them about the flat earth really. And I agree with him. That's the roadblock I've still got with my (laughs) brother-in-law. The one that's married to my sister. Um, He's still adamant. That's all real. So I don't really even discuss it with him. Um, Very little point because he's still happy in that paradigm. So, can't shake that one. There's no point even trying to say engage. But I do, like Josh says, use it to shake people a badge of honour as well. You know, it's just a great way of starting the conversation um, to gather someone's interest. Maybe going, I'm a globalist denier. Kind of puts you in the eco warrior bracket of people's first ear, whereas praise flat earth at least gathers people's attention. And then you can engage if they're interest I've, yeah, I've no problem no, with it good. But I'm if, happy with flat earth I'm happy with that the water find its level most of earth that I've seen and flown over has been water uh, if it's not level then someone's got to demonstrate bendy water sticking now to John. a <laughs> I've shown you bend water come on now Oh uh, yeah, but that's man-made. <laughs> but if I can do it, nature can do it. <laughs> is uh, Paul on the plane still here? He is. He's in his uh, car. I am here. Oh, I am. I, I, I've been muted because of the background noise, but I'm driving right now, so I'm still well, here listening. Thumbs okay. And and agreeing, and then nodding my head and but giving thumbs up and stuff like that. <laughs> Yeah. Can, can I just add one more thing about this university thing that I, I, I really was trying to put across, but basically the moderator just cut us on time because we were up against it. They needed to kick us out, not us, but all of us. There was one bit where I was going to try and push home. And I, I, I'm quite happy to take advice from you guys if I've got the wrong end of the stick here is that if we're, if we are meant to be on a spinning ball and you know centrifugal force is pushing it out, but gravity is keeping it in. So that falls down massively because you're on the equator at 1,040 miles now, and I believe the UK is something like 700 miles, and it goes down, 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 right up to the north, north uh, pole. Then you can't have if it's if it's like you're on the equator and you're spinning at 1,040, 
and it's pushing you out, but you're getting sucked in. And then you've got the UK that's two thirds of that. Then you can't be applying that same logic. So I really, really wanted to put that across them, but I knew it would like fall on death ears, you know, death ears. But I just wondered what you think about that as a concept. Gravity's magic, don't you know? It knows where you're standing on the ball, how fast it's going, how much gravity to apply. It knows when you puff out a plume of smoke that it's not to bother that. It's named smoke and it's on the list. It's names on the list. It's amazing stuff, gravity. Is it? Is it? It look. It, it, it links into your smartphone and it works out where you are. Has to. Must to. Uh, so what? I just. I just wondered what happened in the like you know the previous centuries then because you know I didn't have a smartphone for a little while. Gary, oh, are yeah. you talking <laughs> centripetal uh, centrifugal force? Yeah, the yeah. You know, you know, like if you're on a roundabout and you 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 spin it and you're on the outside, you're you're being pulled out, aren't you? Josh, uh, can you think of any presentation that might be helpful? Maybe with a little bit of prompting as to what the fuck you're talking about, Adam. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you don't know about it, of of my centrifugal force versus all Earth versus a carousel presentation then harry's got no chance has those uh, well that's a pretty specific video <laughs> you just asked me for a video yeah, that might be pertaining to this conversation yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, was, I suppose i, I could I was, try one i, was I could drum something up. <laughs> what 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 we did with that gary was apply the effect of google which is perpendicular to the person um i think it was 1.5 newtons um, and then showed that at the <clears throat> latitude, I think it was at about 45 degrees, showed the difference it would make. The effects in terms of the gravity, the counter effect of gravity is, isn't so much the amount of force, because that's fairly similar. It's reduced by obviously the size of the circumference of rotation, but the significant point is the orientation of the direction of the centrifugal force. Now, gravity is still acting downwards as, as the observer at that different latitude would be. But whereas at the equator, it, the centrifugal force is applied in direct opposition to the gravitational force, the centrifugal force at the other latitude would be applied at a convert of the 45 degree angle away from the direct direction of the as a gravitational force it would be opposing you got that gary um good yeah uh i would have to say that the using their logic and i'll say they as in um you know they're as in the globers that that more or less the actual gravitational pull on you would be similar all over the earth um which would then mean that the spin of the Earth, which would be different in every single parallel, would absolutely be, well, it falls down immediately. So I, I would have to say it's really bad science on their behalf. The point they would use in their defence is that proportionality of the forces is so small. So like I said there, we, we, we calculated, like I said it was about 1.5 newtons. Um, of centrifugal opposing force at the equator but that's for a 50 kilogram person um so the opposing gravitational force would be felt it it would be hard certainly to feel like i said the the point in their model would be the force would be applied at a different angle to the um force that's applied at the equator I'm struggling with that little bit. I've got to be honest. Well, you have to watch the presentation. So. Yeah, no, definitely. If you could link me, link it, uh, I'd love to see. We're, we're doing. We've got a few of those. We've got a few premieres. We did one last week. Um, got a few coming up. One with Paul actually that we did on accelerometers. So uh, I'll give you a shout when it's out, mate, so you can jump in the chat. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. I would love to because um, what I want to do is um, I want to learn. I want to become a bit more battle hardened um, with these um, global levers, really. 
and I just need to understand my subject better on all fronts, which we all do, I guess. You need to listen to the Flat Earth debates. That's a massive education tool. It's a good battleground for you, Gary, as well, if you want to go and practice debating, mate. I've got 50,000 tweets you can go look back over. Um, could I could I do that in about 10 minutes? <laughs> I'm a bit busy now sitting here. <laughs> Put it on your to-do list. Yeah. In a way, though, you need to try and cut out all the dross, don't you? Because there's a lot of, like, um, fluff, for the want of a better word, within a video. Um, and if you could just take out the salient points, then it means you can skip through it a lot quicker. Because I quite often watch videos where I watch them at 1.25 speed or 1.5. Because if you watch it at normal speed, you just don't get through it. Obviously, you can't do it when it's visual things. But when it's just you know, a hangout, a talking, then, you know, invariably you can do it at 1.5 or 1.25. Can I recommend anyone listening to this that if they do listen back to listen at at least 1.5? Makes far more sense. Yeah. It just, I've, I've mentioned, mentioned it to a few people and they just said, oh, that's a good idea. I just, it's just, it just a straightforward. It's just, it just allows you to get through more content, doesn't it? Well, I used to do it on the videos if I made a clip or something. Um, but, my windows media movie maker or whatever has, has died a death and I'm on a shot cut or something. And what it used to do, it, it would increase the tempo, but not the tone or something along those lines. One of these smart audio engineer people would know what I'm talking about, but this shot cut software made us all sound like mickey mouse so it was it didn't quite work <laughs> but it's very handy it was audacity i was using it i was speeding it up in audacity and it would keep the tone but, and not make you sound like mickey mouse but it would speed you up it was um yeah, yeah. It made us sound uber intelligent rather than the bumbling fools that we usually are <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a point. Is there's a, there's a tipping point, isn't there? Where all of a sudden you just can't, you just can't grasp what they're saying. I mean, I find that with Bob and Jaron, I I can find that I can't remember which way round because I haven't done it for about six weeks. But I can listen to one of them at one speed and the other one slightly slower. Yeah, it works. It works. So I normally, depending on who's presenting, I, I do it at a certain speed, then I up it or down it depending on who it is. <laughs> Jaron yeah. does, speaks quite quickly. He's, he... Yeah. It's hard to understand on the fast forward, but I think um, Bob comes across quite well on that. Yeah, I think that's the way around, actually. That's what I've, I've found, but I just couldn't remember because it's been a little while since I've done it. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, good. It's a good way to do it. It's time travelling. Yeah. Did you actually know that you, tra you tra well, I don't know about you, John, but most of us um, time travel uh, in one way or another every day when we look in a mirror. Please, you must go on from that, Gary. You can't leave that. Because <laughs> um, when you're looking at your reflection, yeah, quite, yeah. Sli slightly in the past, isn't it? Slightly. No, it's not. That's if you believe there's a speed to light. Well. <laughs> well. And we all have Superman eyes when we look above <laughs> the horizon as well, right? <laughs> Yeah. I'm now thinking there is no speed to light. Um, I don't know if Adam might be on the same page. We haven't discussed this, but I think uh, you nodded the other day. It's the. It's been on my mind as well, John. Right. Is the Rupert? Sh is it Rupert Sheldrake stuff on that that he did the? Rupert is it a TED talk where he talks about how it was fixed back in the sixties? Um. But it's not, and it's never been, as far as I'm aware, consistently measured at any one thing. Um, and I think the excuse for that is the inability to cons create a consistent media to measure it in, even though they're using vacuums, I think, so all the best they can get. So as far as I'm aware, it's not a constant, but the number we use was fixed in the 60s. 
Yeah, I'm not talking about it, sort of measuring it. I think all of that's nonsense now. I think it's a, a propagation. It's a, an instantaneous propagation. Um, but obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think it's a, an interesting topic. Or not. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it's an interesting topic for the second half. Because it, it runs I, I agree science. with John. John, I agree with you. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Uh, I think it's not me, obviously. I think I had watched something Ken Wheeler-ish um, yep. that, was, that was going on about this, and it, it made infinitely more sense to me and more logic. It did. Anyway. Yeah, I have no proof or couldn't tell you exactly why, but I, I, I think I know what, where you're going, where your head is, and I'm in the same boat. For the record. You are on the record, sir. <laughs> Can I just, um, just, I just got one thing I forgot to mention about the Oxford University thing is when I was talking to one of the, um, the lads, the debaters, he was, he was saying that he reckoned that he could see the ISS and um, we were talking about, um, you know, bits and pieces with it. And he reckons that he can actually see it overhead every 30 minutes and i was absolutely <laughs> away i just thought i actually wanted to say that is absolutely the most stupid thing you've said <laughs> and and the other thing is that really happened that, 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 that made me laugh um is that, that we were i was talking about uh he, he brought up in you know, uh it was Sosthenes and you know and i said when i when it was my turn to go up i just said so this guy Apparently, 2,300 years ago, um, actually had his friend measure it in stadia. And it was, I think it was something like, I couldn't, I couldn't remember if it's 400 kilometers or 100 miles, I said. And I, and I actually said at the time, I couldn't remember which it was. But I said, so one, they would have to have measured it. And two, they would have to have absolutely know now. You've got to make the measurement now. And, I, and this guy in the audience said, yeah, and I said, so exactly how did they do that? And he said, they contacted us. I said, what do they use? Walkie-talkies or mobile? Yeah, it's like, I just, couldn't, I just couldn't believe absolutely how indoctrinated and thick they were. And as far as I'm know, sorry, as far as I'm aware, they weren't even on the same meridian when they between these two towns, and they were something like 800 miles apart. Which was, it's, it's Syene and Alexandria, isn't it? Are they on the same longitude? Oh, I've got I mean, to be honest, I, have, I haven't looked out. There's a good point. No, but anyone who's there in front of a, a Google box would probably be able to tell us in minutes. But the, the Aristophanes experiment is a good one to bring up at these things because they hold so much weight in it that you can very easily show a diagram um, that will show them that it works perfectly well on a flat earth with, with a local sun. sun exactly yeah. so yeah, yeah i mean i've had yeah. many a baller had to concede that and um i think even neil degrasse has gone on on uh, on the record saying similar and then he added a third a third well in a diagram uh, and said, "Look, see, it doesn't work on a flat Earth when it worked perfectly. It's it's it was classic sleight of hand by a magician, where he mm. tells you what he tells you it doesn't work. But if you look at the diagrams that he's putting on the screen, it does work, and it works perfectly. And also, it's not an experiment that's ever been done, and no one's ever done the three well the same... experiment. I'm sorry, John. That's all right." Is that the same video where you see the look go across his face as he realizes that it's all not exactly what he's saying? Is that that same one? I don't know. You may not remember the one I'm talking about. I'm not sure. It's um, it's on a an interview, um, and he talks. Uh, this this one, the one I'm talking about, is in a lab. The guy's doing something, trying to demonstrate some baller. I, it's been too long ago. I know sorry. which one you're talking about. That's not it, Walt. That's no, a great. Yeah, no. but yeah, the guys as he's saying it, you see the look go across his face of like. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the sun we see, even in the globe model, an apparent sun? They will say, well, the sun is actually still 
behind the horizon, but we're seeing it refracted yeah. up yeah. so many degrees. Yeah. So this experiment is null and void right there because the sun that we see on either model is not the actual sun. We're seeing an apparent apparition. I mean, they even come out and Good say point. it. Yeah, totally. And the fact that he came up with the idea that the sun's rays were parallel when any numpty can look at the sun through through a cloud and and see the the crepuscular rays pointing to uh, an object not that far above us but um yeah has anyone seen crow triple sevens latest stuff coming out about the uh, binary oh, sun it. yeah do you know much about mm -hmm. it zach have you can you give us a rundown on it of no i really enjoyed i mean i can't wait to see what crow shows he really didn't show us yet so i'm really excited and you know pumped up to see all the stuff that no he, he did he did he I'm put sure. the video out no, but I don't believe he showed his his evidence of the. Oh, he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that part. I well, I was working. All right, you chat. let me go find it. He actually also posted a picture on Twitter, I think, last night of a really? photograph he must have really? taken. Oh, I can't wait. Of two sons. No, I was enthralled by the language yeah. part of it. Shout out, Pink Floyd. No. Yeah, you know how it's set in. Italian means something totally different once it's translated to our mutt of a language of English. You know, I, the more I learn, the more I realize English is like designed to hide the past. You know, all these other languages, they have so many different ways of saying things. And English is just like, you know, we're just going to dumb it down for, we're going to make a dumb class and this is what they're going to speak. Because I was taught there's Old English, Middle English, and then Modern English. So it was a step. You know, they had to go from all these other languages and kind of. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, when he was sort of reading um, the, on the latest uh, Crow show, they were reading Italian. And, I mean, even French and things like that, where they have masculine and feminine and all sorts of different pronunciations that mean certain things. Um, yeah, English you, is totally you dumbed read it down. In English and you think it's talking to you, you read it in Italian and you're understanding that they're talking only to a select few. Like That's the right. Adepts, yep. You know? And it yeah, means something different totally you. different. Yeah. You know, it's like us saying, uh, or in, in French, say, tu and vu. It's the same in the, with this. Is if it's said one way, then it's to you, the public, and if it's said another way, then it's to you, the initiated. You, mm -hmm. you know this, like I don't know, it, but it's said from a position of of peasantry. And they were talking about Falconelli, and I was listening to it, thinking Falconelli, Falconelli. Where the hell do I know that? And I realised I'd read a whole book on Falconelli um, about. I don't know, four or five years ago, written by Jay Widener, um, called the the. It was something about decoding the the cathedrals, uh, European cathedrals, in alchemical um, something or other. Um, but yeah, real synchronicity there. When it, I just heard this Volcanelli guy, have you heard of him, um, Zach? No, I'm yeah, gonna definitely do, because he's some sort of hermit that breezed through time and wrote a book. Um, no one knows who he was or where he came from or where he went, but he was talking alchemy and he was talking as though, you know, he's talking to adepts. Um, wow. Really, really interesting stuff. I'll, I'll send you this book if you want it, because... I didn't get very far with it. I, I read it, but it it didn't it didn't tweak my nads in those days. But maybe I should read it again. Actually, um, it didn't tweak your nads. <laughs> yeah, English phrase. In, in, oh, yeah, I know I'm English, but it just made me smile. <laughs> say again. I just say it made me smile. <laughs> Have you tried reading it while you tweak your own nads? <laughs> I'll try that next time. 
you made me smile, John, just minutes ago when you said no one knows who they were or where that I was just so like had a spinal tap moment. <laughs> the little children of Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm a big spinal tap fan. John, did you ever come up with that vid? I'm still, it, it seems not to be on his Twitter feed, so I'm just looking at his YouTube now. I was listening to uh, Flat Earth. We got Tony Riley in the house. He was he was in early. I don't know if he's still there. Oh, I thought I could hear his keyboard. <laughs> yeah, busy <laughs> bee. <laughs> no worries. That was no worries. me. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no good. Working, always working. Paul's always I working. Know. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot I was unmuted. Nah, no worries. I'm I'm way worse. I talk to Hank and say all kinds of <laughs> mushy stupid crap all the time <laughs> oh crap well i will say that that brings us to the first hour and a half all right uh, we're not doing that break thing are we we want a bit of gravity john yeah let's play some gravity we'll play it but don't cut the feed just carry on well, given the gravity of the conversation that follows i think it may be a better idea to go ahead and cut the feed and mm. split it up <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right right I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, I'll stop recording, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go ahead and head out, we were having a conversation earlier over the past week at some point, and the idea popped into my brain about, well, I'm clumsy and I'm a mess and I have crap all over my desk down here. So the idea of me pushing something off of my desk is not necessarily unheard of. So I got to thinking about, you know, pushing something off of a desk. Say I pushed off my coffee cup and my phone and I saw both of them fall, but I saw my phone hit before my coffee cup and I thought, hmm, that's weird. So then I pick up my coffee cup and I pick up my phone again and this time I hold them in my hands and then I drop them purposefully in order to see which one hits the ground first. And I see that this time my phone hit the ground first again. I said, huh, that's weird. I put them back on my table and I go back to whatever the fuck it was I was doing. The question is, when I picked them up and dropped them on the ground and saw which one hit the floor first, would that have been a scientific experiment? And I don't think it necessarily follows, falls under what Nathan Oakley or uh, Quantum Eraser John Stunja would say is necessarily a tried and true uh, science experiment. It's not scientific as the very literalistic definition goes. So then my question would be, then what is it? It's obviously more than an observation. The observation was me knocking the crap off the desk with my elbow. That's the observation. And I saw the phone hit first. Okay, there's my observation. But then I went and purposefully recreated it but not in a very scientific manner so it's not a scientific experiment couldn't it just be then an experiment if did you, you have an experiment that is non-scientific does experiment necessarily uh mean it is scientific i guess is sort of where my question lies can't there be an in-between is everything so black and white? I think you have observation, non-scientific and scientific. And obviously I'm not an expert on this and obviously Nathan and Tony and Quantum Razor, but you have to have an independent variable. So you've got to have introduced, and I, I, I may not be saying this correct here, but you've got to have introduced something to it to, to offset it, you know, to actually give it a, um, a, right. another, another cause or another effect. And again, I'm absolutely the wrong person to say, you know, to, That's to the say first this, thing but, that came to my mind too, Gary, was yeah. if you had picked up another object instead of your cell phone and the coffee cup, drop those, compare that to then your cell phone and a different object, drop those, you know, compared all those different variables. But not even that then, wouldn't I have to you start think of hedging into the scientific arena anyway. And I could what, go ahead, Paul. Well, if I was to, to chime in here, I would say that to your question, Josh, you were saying, can I experiment without being scientific? That's kind of what I heard. 
you know, because I think we all agree on what the scientific process is and that the experiment is a component of the scientific process. But to be a valid component of a scientific process, the experiment has to have certain components, the independent dependent variable cause relationship. And number one, you got to have a hypothesis. But I think we can experiment without being scientific. And that is when you are, um, I'm trying to think of an example. My, my, my wife is, we just got a travel trailer and she is looking for like decor, decor things. And so she's going to be going in with different decor things. She's going to be experimenting in there with different decor patterns and things like that. That's, that's, I would still use that word. It's a way of doing things of like trying new things and seeing what works. You're still experimenting with some ideas, but she would never claim that she's doing practicing science. So that's why I think that's what your question was. You're like trying to separate the two. Right. You're experimenting with things, trying to see what happens, but you're not claiming that you're doing, quote unquote, science. And that's where we were trying to I think that's where we want to differentiate. Right. When we start using these words, words have meanings. And if we're saying we are, you know, doing science, well, that's when we've kind of entered a new arena where we have probably have some rules we need to follow. That's my take. Well, well even the we, said, Paul, we have to establish. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Zach. Go ahead, Josh. I was just going to say. I was just going to say that was perfectly <laughs> said. <laughs> okay, you. And John was calling the Eratosthenes um, thing an experiment. So the question is, can you call Eratosthenes an experiment? An experiment if Eratosthenes' experiment was non-scientific? Did I it call it an experiment? I'm pretty sure you did. Oh, it's damn. Me. Uh, it would, it would not be a scientific experiment because he would basically have to do it on a flat Earth and a globe Earth and compare results. He'd have to have that independent variable. He'd have to change the landscape, right? Or the distance of the sun, or something. Yeah, he he have to change some things that he couldn't if that story is even true. So that's why it would not be classified as a scientific experiment. He was making observations and drawing conclusions based on observations that were not scientific. So to say it was science is. Incorrect. I would agree with Nathan on that. Mm -hmm. But at the same, same time, Paul, uh, what it is, because um, I think what I'm picking up from um, in the past is that it's just like a, throw, a throwaway comment and you get to the point that it becomes then accepted as the norm. And that is the bit that is wrong. And I, I personally think, and I was, Adam mentioned it the other day, that I think that at this moment, obviously it's a bit of a mess. And I know it hasn't been mentioned here, but I'm going to say it. It's a bit of a mess at this moment, but down the road, and Adam um, pointed this out the other day, and I agree with him, that this could end up being a really significant crossroads for us. And I'm paraphrasing here, but I just think that long term, we are able then to go to the scientific community. And when they are then making claims, we can actually say, right, OK, can you then show us your proof? And when they then say, yeah, to come back and say, well, actually, that's not quite true based on. So I think personally, I think this is going to be a long term. I agree. hundred percent. hundred percent. This is a good thing. This is something really, really good that we can kind of hone the narrative around making sure that, it, you know, if we are using these term in terminology like, you know, hey, science has proved X, Y, Z. When that is just thrown around, we can we can uh, make sure that. Um, you know, that we bring these things up. I was just looking at the definition of experiment. I was curious, you know, what is, what is, you know, what's generally accepted as the definition. And it comes from a Latin word, which means to try. You're trying things. That's kind of where my analogy was, or my example would be, you know, if you're just trying different things, seeing what looks good, you know, you're trying on different clothes or whatever, you're trying on, you know, sizing or whatever, you know, you're experimenting with different things. You're not claiming to be scientific about it. And that's where when we use terminology like science has proven this or scientific that, that's where we can put the screws to them. I think that's the the first point that I think Nathan's trying to break, and that's the use of language and dilution and the incorporation. That's one thing the English language does. It incorporates words from pop culture and they become used. And I think with the term experiment, it's certainly been diluted. As you exemplified, you can experiment in the kitchen. It's something that is used to <clears throat> give a real description that you're doing something a little bit more. 
but it's <clears throat> it's a bastardization of the original form um which the english language does and, and i think that's the first point and if we're talking about the kitchen or home decor we can all recognize instantly that the word experiment is not being used in its scientific term but if we are engaged in any debate scientifically then i think it's reasonable to assume that we are saying the word scientific experiment uh, and the implications that come with it um, because i'm not aware of any disclaimers that people use in scientific discussion where they use the word experiment but they don't mean a scientific experiment and that's the point we've we've got to a point now where and this is the real thing it's not just about the language it's about flat earthers ability and everybody's ability to wake up and recognize what is a scientific experiment well and said what isn't yep i agree yeah. I agree 100%. Well said. Yeah, Adam, I love the way you speak. It's so beautiful. Now I'm going to say it for the simpleton. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and experiment with drugs. <laughs> and that's fine. Or I experimented with drugs when I was younger. Okay? You can say that. That's fine. But when you were establishing that you were measuring the shape of the earth, then you were talking about something scientific which means you have to change your vocabulary around. Now you are speaking a different language. It's, think of it as speaking mathematics. You're not gonna put two plus you know, brick equals something. You have to stay within the parameters. So when we're speaking scientifically, we have to speak scientifically. I think we when, we're talking about, when we're talking about um, experimenting on the shape of the earth and the speed of the earth and the cosmos and the sun and all the rest of it. I, I don't think any of that is scientific experiment. I think you're, you're far more hitting the nail on the head when you're experimenting with drugs in terms of being a true scientific experiment because you have independent variables, you have a phenomenon. Let's see what I have when I happen to take 10 pills. Let's see what happens when I take 20 pills. Exactly. When I, when I don't take any pills. See, there your, your, your independent uh, variable is changing and you're I vary the temperature establish. or I vary the alcohol you're, intake you're, along with Yeah, you're pill. establishing a cause, a, a, you know, a cause, cause and effect. Exactly. So Absolutely. That's, that's, the science, that's very scientific. And uh, yeah, so not to cut you off, but that's, that's where that's where the dangerous parts of in our language are is when we start saying, you know, hey, I'm going to go out there and make this and do this laser experiment. So we're talking about, you know, uh, measuring the surface of water over a great distance. And, I, you know, I, I have to agree with with Nathan and his narrative there, because he's just, I think, just reminded us that if we are going to be using that terminology, that there are some certain rules around that. And we need to adhere to those. We need to pay those, you know, in mind, bear those in mind. And yeah, we can go out there and make observations and see if we, and test to see if I can see a laser over here to there. But to say that this is a scientific experiment, not. Um, and I think we know, need to take the reins. Not entirely true. Point out all the so-called experiments that we have yes. been told our whole lives that are experiments. Exactly. And point That's it out point. and say, no, yes. that is That's not an experiment. Science yeah, what we were taught are scientific experiments that prove yeah. the globe. We take that mm -hmm. and put those into the scientific method and show, no, there was no experiment, no scientific experimentation here that you could say was conducted that would allow you to draw that conclusion because this didn't even qualify as an experiment. That's where you're going to destroy that conversation or destroy mm -hmm. that claim. That's where I disagree with that, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, Gary, I missed it. What did you say, man? So I was saying, this is why this is going to, going to be a very powerful thing. I'm not saying it isn't powerful now, but it's, it's still in its infancy being established. And obviously, Nathan's done a lot of groundwork on this with Quantum Razor and obviously Tony. But long term, this is going to be very significant. And I personally think this is a crossroads, a crossroads moment. And I must say, when I first... Sorry, well, go ahead. It's part of having to reclaim our language. I mean, they've already they already have us so under a spell with their freaking sorcery language that you know us trying to reclaim it and and change it. I mean, it it only makes sense. In fact, it, as you were talking about that, Adam, it made me wonder about the the word itself. I mean, we know what government means, so let's find out what experiment means. 
the Etymology Online Dictionary, mid-14th century, action of observing or testing, an observation, test, or trial. Also, piece of evidence or empirical proof, feat of magic or sorcery. It's right here in the freaking etymology Bam. of the word. You know? Bam. So, awesome. Walt brings it full circle. Wow. And that's very true as well. Experiment is it has to be something of the mind, doesn't it? Of because the mind. It's like government. Yep. Mm. It's uh, got to be focused on the natural world, isn't it? I believe. I think Nathan's been saying. It has to be a nat- a natural um phenomenon. Population. Yeah. And and yeah, can I just, Well I would I would things. just suggest there that, that etymology is <laughs> is an occurrence before the development of what we'd call the scientific method. That's they're observing how stupid humans are. I'm sorry, Adam, I had to just get it out. They're, they're, they're phenomenal. <laughs> if, if I put this if I put this into sales speak, then you have a feature, you have an advantage, and you have a benefit. And a lot of people use the word benefit in error. So basically a benefit for the for the sake of people that do not know, a benefit is when it's a benefit to you. So if you've got, for instance, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, your wife is really, really tall and the car is is pretty big, then the benefit to that person is that they will be able to get into the car without changing their gait too much or getting backache or whatever. Whereas if they gave that to, say, Adam, then if his answer is, so what, I don't need it, then it's not a benefit. So it's, get, it's getting the terminology right, that if you know what a feature is, you know what an advantage is, and a benefit is only if it's a benefit to you specifically so it's just understanding that and all you've got to do is use that logic to understand the experiment which has got to be scientific and i don't understand it fully but i know this is a very significant moment in in our in our time within fleur yeah yeah i agree all yeah, i was kind of like a kind of like an awakening when nathan went through that and it took a while for me to kind of you know, to kind of sink in, but it kind of boiled and or kind of simmered for a while. And I was like, you know, he's just, he's spot on with this. If we're going to, we're going to call it this, we need to make sure that we pay that, you know, pay those things uh, or bear those things in mind because, um, and then, and then where we're going with this is exactly what we've talked about is that we face, you know, we, we face all these claims about all the scientific, you know, that, that science as a body has proved, you know, this and that. And, um, now I think we have some ammo to really drill down and say, let's examine what you are exactly saying there. I mean, you talk about when we get into debates and things like this, being able to bring up some of these scientific principles are going to be, um, they're, 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 it's definitely going to change the conversation in our favor because I think that the language like we're talking about has really gotten away. Nathan uses the word hijacked, um, but the bastardization of the words has allowed them to be used um, very um, in, in a very lazy way. And if we can bring those back and, and, and focus on what those words actually mean, I think it's going to turn some heads for sure, especially in, a, in an organized debate. And also, Paul, it's going to make us look at everything else within Flat Earth in a more of a critical eye. With Absolutely. A critical eye because what it's done, it's, it's almost like opened you up that you've almost been, for want of a better word, asleep to you've accepted certain things like for instance i have i have a pet hate with like the van and about that you know we are discounting science about the moon we're discounting about the rockets in space we're discounting this we're discounting that but we seem to accept the van and about because it suits us but we've been told that by space by the scientists and you think well no hold on a minute you can't have your cake and eat it so you know i don't know if that comes across but you know i just i just feel that we need to you know really we've got to almost like be critical on every part of it and then come out with decent material yeah just drop the etymology of the word over in our description for the uh, show so everybody can check it out at length it I mentions was, sorcery again later on in the uh i was just going to um comment on that walt because i think that's really quite telling because i don't think the say the the the, the age of the etymology is that it predates scientific methods so i think it would be incorrect to claim that science holds exclusivity on the term experiment. I think it's necessary to quantify, I'm going to use the term experiment now, in, in what method, and the scientific method, I want to get onto that, how it can be used. But the, the, the etymology there, which was um, 
to test in the mind I, I assume is the the link there the experience then meant um I think it's quite telling it's not necessarily I think the original etymology linked to science per se it's a demonstration an example that helps you test something in your mind I would suggest is the original etymology in, in terms of its pre-science use as you go in there or is it to test the mind oh, yeah cool maybe they are testing what we do this is that just hit me like on a large scale, you have a group here, a group here. Maybe there's a whole other civilization that we don't know about. And they're trying out lies, different lies, different like, stories. You mean like we're living in a large Petri dish? Could be. <laughs> or just, they're finding how we tick, how a large group of people might think. I mean, they know that there's going to be a few stragglers like us out there that don't buy into it. But what if they're just seeing how far they can go how far how much they can lie to a large group of people and get them to believe it would that be an experiment guys I I, yes. yeah. i'm sorry to interrupt but uh i gotta go to bed because i'm really tired and it's okay here. thank you for i saw you we always I saw Didi you yawn a few times there yeah, yeah. yeah. i'll catch up That's tomorrow because uh, it's very interesting but uh, i'm just super tired Good night. Good night, Didi. Good night, Didi. Good night, Good night. thanks. Good to see you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, Didi. I'll probably take off at the break, too. I got three kids here screaming for dinner. So we've been well, in the break. Go, Paul, I, just, I just want to mention, though, that I just hope that some of the things that are happening within Flat Earth get resolved um, soon because, um, you know, we love and care about the people that are affected here. And um, even though it's, it's quite an emotive topic, Obviously, at this moment, it's actually quite, you know, it's been quite uh, heated, and I just hope that gets resolved. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Obviously, the uh, we're stronger together, so um, I, I find this fascinating, and um, I'd love, love to talk more about it, because that's how I think we discover new things, is through, uh, is through the language and through, uh, through the conversation, and yeah, I appreciate everybody's um, insight here, you know, as we, as we learn more about this and, and understand what it means um, and how we can use it to to our advantage to continue to you know propagate some of these uh, some of these truths that we're finding some of these facts about our world and more importantly like we were talking like you guys were talking about earlier in the show is that you know it's probably best to uh, to really be describing ourselves as um, global deniers because to say, you know, well, what, what, where's your science behind the flat earth? Well, I think we have to critically look at ourselves and say, yeah, we have made a lot of observations and we can draw conclusions from those. And, and it seems reasonable. But to say that we have scientific evidence, we don't maybe have as, any more than, than a globalist would have for theirs. Well, I hope you really do tune in for the second half because we've got a little conversation that we had with Nathan Oakley that I think is going to be pretty eye-opening for a lot of people. Yeah. So I want to make sure, John Savage, you've got that queued up. I've got and gravity queued. I've had it queued for ages, guys. That was my question. Do it. Beautiful. Yep. <laughs> he should have just played it and just cut us all off and just... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. That's how I see it. So uh, to Gary's point, you know, we can critic we need to critically look at everything with this lens, make sure that we are being honest with ourselves and with everybody that we're, that we're talking to and that we're sharing with because, it, you know, these rules are, we need to be applied uh, across the board, you know, not in just our favor. Also, if, we truly, nice. if we truly care about the truth, you know, if we truly care about the truth. Yeah, and we might have to come to a conclusion that we will never know some of these things. Yeah. That, that might be we a might. Learning, learning step of this whole place, really. That's you know? what makes science great. It's a journey. Yeah, yeah. It's a journey of discovery. But I also don't think you need science no, or experiments to know Certain we'll things. Get to that, go down. We'll get hey, to that. Joe. Slow down. Is, Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get right. this gravity. I'm muting. Get on with it. Pull the cord. <laughs> Hit the button. Do whatever. Uh, right. Tell me well, then, press play, Mister.
will do. We'll just wrap up the first half of the show. I want to thank everybody for watching here on the Iron Realm Media YouTube channel. We have 1,966 subscribers. So don't be shy. Don't hesitate to go ahead and mash that uh, subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the little bell notification. Maybe you'll hear about us coming on next week. We'll be here. And maybe you'll hear about it. You know how YouTube is. But we're also simulcasting right now to our Iron Roll Media Facebook page. So whilst you're mashing buttons, head on over to Facebook, hit the search bar. You can look for us at, at flat and free on the Iron Realm or just search Iron Realm Media, whichever is the easiest. Uh, you can find us over there. Go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, we're going to come back with the second half of the show that's going to have a really good conversation. Um, this is definitely a crossroads of sorts for this community. Um, I think it remains to be seen exactly which direction, which way we're going to head. Um, it could be one of several directions and many of them are not good. Uh, so it's going to take a lot of effort on our part to maintain focus on not just getting our message out there, but being able to do it in a civil manner and when necessary a conciliatory manner because by god we don't always know everything uh yeah we'll just save a lot of this for the conversation when we get back uh this has been have no sphere on the iron realm media youtube channel adam play that video Our own.